Hello. Today I want to talk about screening and prevention. You hear a lot about people getting annual exams, but what really does that mean? It means that once a year you go to see your doctor who does a certain number of things to make sure you're still healthy. One of the things they w should be doing, I guess, is asking you about certain preventive health measures that you should be doing on your own daily, such as wearing your seatbelt, taking a multivitamin, drinking enough water, exercising. They should check your weight, compare it to the previous year, make sure it's stable. If you're gaining weight, that's a, another whole discussion that they may have you come back for after doing some lab work. There are multiple health screening tests that get done and, and every so often as you age, we add another one to that. So one of the first things is, when do we do annual exams? Well, you might have guessed this already, once a year. Now you may need to go in more frequently if something crops up, but normally it's just once a year. And after the screening and health questions, then usually the doctor or mid-level provider, nurse practitioner, PA, midwife, would move on to a physical exam. Your physical exam should consist of pretty much an exam from head to toe. Now you may not end up with a detailed eye exam or ear exam, but they probably are gonna check your neck to see if your thyroid is still normal size or see if there are any lymph nodes in the area listen to your heart, listen to your lungs, and as in the case for women, which I'm a female provider, we're gonna do a breast exam, underarm and then breast, and then check your abdomen and then a pelvic exam. Pelvic exams usually involve at least looking at the area on the outside, the labia, and then if needed for a pap smear, a speculum exam, and then what's called a bimanual exam to see if we can feel, if you still have it, your uterus and ovaries, and look for other masses. You'd be amazed what can be picked up that way. Now, for women in the preventive category, we also ask, are you doing a self-breast exam? It's not critical, but we recommend that you try to do that once a month. Now, when you hit 40, we're going to recommend that you start getting an annual mammogram. I like to give my patients a written order that they take with them to the facility so that I get a result back. It just saves a lot of trouble tracking it down the next year. I mentioned multivitamins. Why multivitamins? Why is that important? Because how many people do you know eat enough fruits and vegetables every day to get all of the vitamins that we need? How many people do you know go out in the sunlight, expose enough skin every day to get vitamin D absorbed through their skin? I don't know any, actually. Most people I know that spend any time at all in the sun wear sunscreen, which prevents you from absorbing the sun's rays. Those are converted, help convert your vitamin in your skin to D3, which is usable. Calcium, how many people drink enough milk? Now there is calcium in green vegetables, but how much do you need to get the amount of calcium you should get every day? Water. How much water do you need every day? Well, I've heard a lot of different things, like twice your body weight in kilograms, a gallon, a half a gallon, eight glasses of eight ounces, that's 64 ounces. A gallon is 144 ounces. 
and it's hard for some people to drink eight ounces but what I have found is the more water I drink the more I want so if you're substituting water for other fluids then you may not crave water the other fluids might be a problem because they contain a lot of sugar or caffeine caffeine actually dehydrates you so you have to be careful with that and the sugar of course we pretty much know what that does it leads you to gain weight it's a risk factor for diabetes in terms of exercise, how much is enough? Is there such a thing as too much? A rule of thumb would be 30 minutes every day. If you can't exercise every day, do you exercise every other day or three or four times a week, maybe for an hour, so that makes up for the days you're not exercising? Why do you exercise? Multiple reasons maintain flexibility, maintain strength. How many people have desk jobs? You're not moving around enough. Helps burn calories, speed up your metabolism. Um, those are just things to think about. There's a lot to staying healthy. All of this used to come naturally before we started controlling everything in our environment. Now, in terms of the preventive health exams and when you should start getting an annual exam if you're female. I see girls as young as 10. I've seen them younger, but when they start having menstrual problems, their moms bring them to me and we work on fixing that. But then as, they, as you move through your teens, if you're thinking about becoming sexually active, that would be the time to come in and talk about birth control. But in terms of testing in the teens, only STD testing if you're sexually active. We don't start doing pap smears until you're 21 years old. And only then if you've been sexually active. Women who have never been sexually active do not need pap smears. But again, if you have been sexually active, those start at age 21. So let's say you're still coming in for annual exams dutifully every year, and I certainly have a bunch of patients that do that. When they hit 40, we start giving them the mammogram orders and talk to them about doing that. I have said, on other shows that mammograms only pick up about 90% of breast cancers. So it's important that you do the self breast exam about once a month in case you develop a mass that's not seen by mammography. Then as you're aging and you're getting older, the next thing that's added on at age 50 is a colonoscopy. Most people make a face and say, oh, I don't want to do that. But the thing they dread the most about it is the pre-colonoscopy prep. And I get it. I'm old enough to have needed those. Um, it's not pleasant for anyone. Heck, mammography is unpleasant, but do we do it every year? Yes. I've had women so afraid of getting a mammogram that they wouldn't get one, but when I finally asked them why, they admitted they were afraid it was going to hurt. I'm like, yeah, it's not fun or comfortable, but it's not like you can't handle it. Colonoscopies, just drink the stuff, just do it. They've made it more palatable. If you really can't drink fluids to that degree for some medical reason, there is a method of taking pills, but it has to be for a very good reason because that isn't the best way to do it. And you do need to have a complete clean out in order to have an adequate colonoscopy. Also, they knock you out. You don't know what's going on when you're having, the procedure is nothing. 
it's really about the clean out the day before or the night before. Last time I had one, they started at five o'clock at night with the drinking. Uh, oh, this is new and different. Another thing I ask in my office at annual exams is who's checking your cholesterol? Well, at what age do you need to start having your cholesterol checked? It depends on your family history. It, you know, I think everybody should have one, at least a screening cholesterol in their mid-20s. If it's normal, you can wait years, five years or whatever. But as you age, it needs to be done more frequently. And the thing about it is, is with the blood work, we're not just checking your cholesterol. Most offices will check a slew of labs, your blood count, kidney and liver function, thyroid, screen you for diabetes by checking your hemoglobin A1C, and your blood sugar. So there's a lot of stuff that comes in when those panels are done. So what are the long-term benefits of going through all of this every year? We can pick things up early enough that you can get treatment and avoid some very severe long-term consequences, such as diabetes. I always feel badly when I'm seeing someone for the first time and I know they have diabetes because there's so much sugar in their urine, they haven't had medical care, and it's just sad. Part of it is maybe insurance, and I get that, we all get that. So, do what you can. If you have insurance and can afford it, get your annual exams done. Thank you.